Um, hey, Cubby, are you there? Why, hello, friend. <laughs> all right, all right, I didn't get it that time. You have to try it again. <laughs> all right, I did, I did, I did, I did, I did, I did, I did. I could do it as many times as your heart desires. I know, like eight, eight million. Just, yeah, um, at least, on the first try. God. I, I already have the biggest smile. It is wonderful to see you tonight, Cubby. Thank you for being on the show. Uh, while my while my standard ready uh, Peace Academy buddy Isaria is having her technical difficulties, I think uh, you know if I had to pick one person to say like I think I understand where this blame has to go, I think I'd know the one I'd pick. You know what I'm talking about here. No, what are you talking about? Oh, well, I'm talking about Shane. I'm suggesting ah. that Shane might be to blame for uh, for just about everything. I heard it's, that he was roaming around breaking stuff. You know, again. it's been a pretty quiet week as far as I'm concerned. Um, <laughs> I, I'm I'm grateful that literally the only well, I did this is not completely challenge free. Um, I. So the the topic for tonight, um, the topic for tonight is healthy conflict resolution, and the uh, the the means of which we are going to get there is a little thing called MSP dash bidbot. Uh, so if you're think so, yeah, exactly. So tonight is not exactly about the bidbot. Uh, tonight is really about how to have healthy conflict over a hot button issue where tempers flare and you have all these really strong things that you're feeling and all this other stuff. Um, but we don't want to go there. Like we're, we're going to try to have a healthy discussion about it. So, uh, I started this thing. I started MSP dash bidbot. It's been, it's been in the mod meeting conversations for the last two weeks. And in two weeks, I literally haven't had a single, like, negative comment about it, like, through the Trello or through the moderators. So I didn't, I didn't actually call a vote on it because I, I didn't hear any dissent. Um, Azari, are you there? Are you, are you speakable now? Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you great. So okay, I, was, I was just explaining. Um, so I didn't hear a single moderator tell me, hey, Agrode, I don't think we should do this over the last two weeks. So maybe maybe I was silly and I didn't call a vote that, like, hey, we're actually going to do this. Um, hey, which, hold on, hold on. i got to yell at somebody. Yusuman, you've got to take down, my, <laughs> take down my, my secret emoji or my special emoji. Uh, no, 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 no. We have rules and standards around here. It's my emoji. It's my baby. Well, you're using the aggro emoji to not blame Shane. And I feel like that is an inappropriate... Now, all of you, look at what I've done. I've encouraged all of you people to do this. You tell a bunch of libertarians that they can't do something, and suddenly they're all, we can, we can do whatever we want. But, um, well, being proactive against spam... That, well, that's... Ron... That's not quite the same as being like, let's not do this. I mean, we can go figure out, like, I can put the blacklist on there. I can go do lots of different things to make it so that um, the bid bot is as good of a bid bot as possible. Um, but let's see. So, Cubby, do you, do you have any particular feelings about uh, bid bots one way or another? Not particularly. I did recently try all of them. And then I realized that I sent a lovely donation to all of them <laughs> because most of them follow other people already on to the, the auto votes that I receive. So that was hilarious. What do you mean? They f the bid bots don't follow people. Um, uh, no, some of them do, but I never got one from Love Juice, so that didn't work. And then the other ones, they do follow. What do you mean it didn't the... work? <laughs> it didn't work. I sent the thing, and I never got anything, and it didn't work. So I was like, well, that was... Not as exciting as I thought it would be. But I did use Minnow Booster a few times in the beginning, and I thought it was phenomenal. And I was doing the math, and I was like, wow, this makes a lot of sense for you to invest a little bit to do this because the return is so much greater um, on it. Why don't more people do this? Yeah, well, they don't do it because there's a stigma against it. 
Um, yeah, so I, pan, no, I, 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 I put together a BidBot. It's called MSP-BidBot. No, it's not It's not a uh, private BidBot just for members. That's, that's silly. We want as many people to vote on this thing as possible. It's a public BidBot. This is what's different. So Inertia went and created a... Um, Inertia created a... a program that basically allows BidBots to exist. It is the base program. He open sourced it. And then the, his first case for that was Booster. So Booster went out and they put 500,000 SP on it and they started selling votes. And uh, then other people realized, hey, we can make a lot of money doing this. And now there's a lot of BidBots on the platform. Um, some of which are better than others, but they're all basically running the exact same script. Uh, Minnow Booster is running a different one, but most most of them are just running uh, Inertia's BidBot called Dr. Otto. And I set up, I was already using um, LoveJuice as a BidBot, and so I said, all right, I'm not getting a lot of flack from mods. I'm just going to go set this thing up. I called it MSP-BidBot, and um, and this is what's different about it. What's different is that anybody that delegates to this thing uh, will get payments minus a very small percent that will go back to the account at Minnow Support. And so it's just a little bit different because this is a bid bot that is specifically designed as 95% profit and 5% charity to at Minnow Support. So it's similar to all these other things. I don't have a lot of um, I don't have a lot of precautions uh, built in yet that Rondon was suggesting that we do. Um, but you know, maybe you guys will forgive me. It, it'll get there. I mean, I just don't think. Uh, initially, I was like, I'm not going to spend lots of time setting up a bid bot, uh, including all this like um, stuff. Hold on, the. Um, I'm not going to okay, spend okay. all this time like proactively trying to get self-defense into this thing if it doesn't take off at all. Although already I put on 5,000 SP as a starter and it's up to like almost nine. So that's not bad for like 12 hours here. It's almost doubled in size. So let's just uh, talk a moment about the difference between something like Minnow Booster and the others. So Minnow Booster is a paid upvote bot it is not a bid bot. no that's true that's true so that is the difference there i believe rando whale is the same kind of thing rando whale is toast bernie right. took it down rando rando whale is gone minnow booster there was some kind of issue with that i don't think it's going to be around much longer anymore I'm not well sure. no they'll they'll keep it going i mean that that seems to be a battle between bernie sanders and probably the crypto drive bernie's not oh, a big yeah. fan of him yeah. Yeah, so that's a paid upvote bot. Yep. Um, so now all the other ones are bid bots, and they range. Some are really large, some are really small. Now the difference, from my understanding, is that this new MSP bid bot is actually going to be giving money back to people that delegate to it. That's the difference between yeah. this so, one. So like on, on Love Juice, I don't I don't pay anybody. Um, on love juice like it's all my sp so when people when people are bidding and they put and there's money there like i don't distribute that back to anybody other than me because i'm the owner and i invested everything and what i do with that what i choose to do with that is to go pay uh minnows to go get on there and post about it and just tell stories and write whatever and they can get five sbd or five us dollars worth of, um, of steam currency and um, and they can get their their name out to 1200 people and that seems like a pretty good service if you are like brand new on the platform and don't really have any ways yet to go make 5 SBD um, so and that's different than um, it's different than MSP BidBot because I added a, a second layer on top of this thing and that second layer basically allows Anybody that delegates to this thing will be paid proportional to how much they have delegated into it. So, um, so Rondon has asked me, what about curation? Um, the curation rewards, basically anything that the bot gets, it will reinvest. Um, and then hopefully just add bigger votes over time. 
Um, and otherwise, it's the money that comes in, the S any SBD that's there. Uh, so SP will just go back to the bot, but any S SBD that's on there, it'll just calculate what percentage of a delegator are you, and it will send uh, that much SBD back relative to how much it how much it made. So, which is that's really different, and that to me would benefit the minnow community. I think that that's a great thing. I mean, I, I'm not an expert on these bot things, but like as far as I, my understanding is that the other, all the other ones have rented delegation or it was their own delegation. Um, so they're just receiving all the profit. But the difference here is that we're Any, taking delegations yes. from anyone. Yep. And so then instead of one person receiving all the profit from it, it's being spread out to anyone who delegates to it. Yeah. Which is, I think it's a great thing. And, the, and so my challenge was, look, I saw that there's like eight big bid bots or something, and they run my eight whales, and they make a bunch of money. And I was thinking, you know, it's not fair that eight whales that know how to do this can have this special ability to to make money with their bid bot, whereas everybody else can't, because, you know, Azaria, do you know how to set up a bid bot? <laughs> no. Well, exactly. <laughs> See, that's the thing. How many people on right. this platform actually know how? We do have a fair number of devs, but, like, if you got to pay a dev and all this other crap, you know, it's not, it's not a good system. So I just went and I set it up, and then I paid for some, uh, a script that would basically count up how much delegation you had and then pay you back proportionally to that so that's the right. uh, I, th I, I think it's amazing so now let's talk about you know the let's start from the beginning for those of us who aren't aware of what this last hard fork did I know that you spoke in your post about the yeah. linear rewards so can you talk some about that sure this this is tricky um, but the way that this whole thing worked was that uh, there's a there's a term in the equation of how much how much is your post going to be rewarded, and the math for that is based off of this thing called reward shares, and reward shares and it it was some combination of how much SP you have, like how many how much steam power you have on your account, and how many people were voting on it, um, and beforehand on Hard Fork 18 and prior. It was it was um, reward shared squared. So before linear rewards, it was exponential rewards. And in uh, the new one, we no longer square it. We just take that value reward shared. So this is a linear because it's one to one. It's no longer squared, which is like this. It's weird. This is kind of particular for the show, but. Uh, instead of the rewards, the rewards now are just R instead of R squared, and that matters a shit ton because the distribution on this platform is that 1% of people have 93% of the steam. And then if you square that, the effect is even massively more, which is why the whales could control like 99.9% .9 of the voting and the, the distribution before this hard fork. Now they have, you know, 93% and they don't all choose to vote. So that's roughly how we got here. Um, so uh, with linear rewards, it no longer matters. So like James SC is one of like the, he, he's one of the founders. He was mining and he had some steam to begin with. He's got like 2 million, 2.5 million steam power. And if he would vote on one of my posts and there weren't other people already voting on it, he would get $7 for that. Uh, with 2.7 million SP, it was a $7 vote. And it wasn't until lots of other people had voted on something that he could actually capture more rewards from it, like 50 or more. I mean, I, this is like a year ago, so maybe not all the inflation that happened was there. But the point is, is that he could get 10x rewards if there were lots of other people on it which made it really hard to go vote on minnows because your curation rewards were either versus $7 or versus $70. And as a investor, you know which one of those you want, which is how we got into mega circle jerks where like oh. nobody wanted to get away from the top 10 authors because that's where all your curation was coming from. Oh. 
Oh, wow. And so now, um, now it's linear, and it doesn't matter if other people vote on it. So a thing like a bid bot, if nobody else votes and, and it gets a big vote, it'll get a big vote. Whereas Hard Fork 18, if nobody voted on it and a bid bot came and placed a big vote on it, it wouldn't be worth that much because that's how Hard Fork 18 worked. So Hard Fork 19 allows all these bid bots because you don't need other people to come in and it's just how much steam power you put on it is how much the vote is going to be worth. And so you, now, does, um, if you use the bid bot, um, let's say your post was whatever, five days old. If you used a bid bot, would, wouldn't that help all the people that had previously voted on your stuff as far as their curation? Yeah, actually it would. So like if I go use Minnow Booster, if I wait six days and at the end of six days I start using Minnow Booster, I can actually help because all those people will get a portion of the curation from that. It might right. actually be, it's kind of a nice thing to them. Yeah, so, I, I, that's what I like about it. There's two things that I like about it. One is for new users. Um, I specifically really liked Render Whale because, and I guess Minnow, Boost, Minnow, Minnow Booster as well, because those votes came in instantaneously as opposed to the yep. 2.4 hours. But yep. I like the fact that they could use it. You know, there's a lot of people out here that are making, you know, 24 cents on a post. Yeah. They're putting all this hard work on it. They need to get into the hot tab. Yep. If they don't get into the hot tab, then their post stays in the new tab, and you know that more and more people vote or post more stuff, and their post just gets lost. Yep. So, you know, that's why I like those uh, for new users so that they could get pushed into the hot tab. And then the other reason why I like it is at the end that you can reward all the people that voted on your post. So, to me, those are two benefits. So, now let's talk about why people are so against the bid bots. Yeah, Cubby, are you still there? I'm still here. Cubby, give me a reason why somebody might not like the bid bots. Tell you the truth, I have no idea why people don't like the bid bots. I don't really pay attention to the drama as to why they don't. Uh, to me, it makes sense as to why you would. But maybe they would feel that it's unfair to use the bid bots because it's not actually getting a, a true readership of people you know, reading your thing. It's just a whole bunch of bots upvoting your thing without it actually having any value because if it had value people would read it and upvote it themselves yeah i mean you would think so but um so okay so this okay, show so, this, wait a minute. hold so, on okay go ahead sorry. well i just want I'll, I'll let you go in a second <laughs> but i just want to remind people that this show is not meant to be the bid bot show it is meant to be the peace academy show <laughs> so uh, I just want to compliment Cubby on the way that she is raising a possible concern. She is not saying, well, look, you dickhead, this is the problem. The problem is that these posts are getting rewards without views, and it's a freaking waste of the platform, and you're a jerk for supporting it. So I, I wouldn't use those words. Well, I know you wouldn't use those words, which is why I'm <laughs> I'm complimenting you. I'm trying to imagine Cubby using those yeah. words. No, <laughs> me too. I but, was like, wow, this doesn't sound like me at but, all. But, but that's, I, that's, I see your point. But this is I'm just trying to use Bidbots because they're a hot topic item right now, and the show isn't Bidbot 101, and it's not you know the Bot Academy. It's the Peace Academy. <laughs> so I just want to talk through like these are when when temp. Tempers get high with this stuff. People get passionate about it. Um, so I just want to make sure that we're, I mean, I'm not worried about the two ladies in the room with me. But, you know, if you guys have concerns, the point of this show is to, like, come in and have a good conversation about it and talk about how to have a good conflict with somebody else without going on offense. And we're just using a hot button item right now to talk about it. Right. Azaria, you're up. I'm sorry to hog the mic. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I'm going to the boss. <laughs> I mean, you can. I, I personally love that he hogs the mic. That helps me a lot. But um, no, I one of the posts that we worked on this week was actually conflict resolution. So it ties in perfectly with this. But I just wanted to say, I know that people say, well, um, hey, if your post had... Uh, had a valued content or content of value that people would be upvoting it but they we're just so oversaturated with posts and that's my concern is the new users that spend all this time on a really good post and no one sees it so that's why i like bid bots for them but i know that the the big concern is that shit posters are using it 
and that's a huge concern. So maybe a solution could be a blacklist idea that all bot owners could possibly black, you know, find a way to blacklist people that are plagiarizing and shit posting. All right. So, um, so you just you just let out a nice idea and did that in a calm, supportive, like pleasant suggestion. Uh, Azaria, your work right now is to go tell me that exact same thing, but do it in sort of a shitty way. So I want, I want the only way that people really learn is through the Delta. So that was a nice way. What I'd like you to do is try that exact same thing, but give this audience a version of what would be a shitty way to say that same thing to me. Uh, yeah, the problem with big bid bots is the shit posters. I can't even be. Yeah, you got to right. No, get get your get your fucking war paint on and come at me, Azaria. <laughs> No, this is no. I actually, I actually really like this because I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make the two sweetest women in this place be mean to me. Face you with a bit bot supporting yeah. all the crappy load users. Yeah, you know, you know what? Hard enough to do. Here you go. You got this. You know what? We need, we need Torque on here. I think she would do a good job. And where's Crimson? I know that she's against bots. Okay, you know what? The problem with the bots is that. We're rewarding shit posters, and, and you're still hold on. You're still going I, I factual. You, I know. I can't. Do you know? Do you know what aggression is? Do you even know what <laughs> passive aggressive is or condescending? Uh, we got this. We need to like sidebar. God, I'm trying. I guess this is like the teach Azaria to be mean show for right now. God, <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> Yeah, let's bring Shane on here. Shane, can you do this? No, we're going to... All right, all right. Torco has asked twice now to be on the show. I'm dragging Torco in. All right, go ahead. Thank you. Torco, you were on the show. Can you you give us a quick mic check? See, Torco, I brought you on, and you're not even talking. Come on. Come on, Papa. I'm going to kick her off. You were just on the show with me talking. Yeah. Yeah. Shane, get on here and be aggressive. All right. Well, uh, you know I'm what? Gonna, I'm gonna hop her into another room and check her mic. So hang all right. All right. Okay. They're gonna do that. Uh, there's all Shane. Right. Here's the issue. Okay. You, you're an you're an idiot if you think bid bots are good for this community. They do nothing. All they do is do upvotes, and I don't know where you would come up with idea. That's the stupidest idea I've ever heard, and I don't even know why you would even think of anything like that. Yeah. See now, wh- what are you trying to channel there? Because, you know, that is not your standard Shane approach. I mean, I think you're generally moderately, like, uh, moderate approach, but now you're, you're actively being sort of aggressive here. What are you channeling? Why are you, why are you picking those words? Because I, and, and uh, maybe we should also hear you give a nice version of the same thing, Shane. Because, again, it's, it's the delta that we're going to look at. All right, so the issue I have with the bid bots aggroed is that I really don't feel that they help the platform very much. And uh, my personal feelings are uh, personal engagement automatic instead of automatic engagement. It's going to help the platform grow. It's going to help the authors learn how to blog better. And I think that's going to help the platform overall much better than a bid bot would. All right, hold on. So somebody has a math question for me. This is, what what is a delta? So um, delta is is literally if you uh, you just look at the difference and the difference means a subtraction so if I take if I take 10 minus 7 the Delta or the difference is a 3 so like what but in this case what I'm really trying to say the Delta between these two things meaning the difference between them is that you know just looking at a statement in a vacuum isn't gonna help us we want to look at a healthy statement and then we want to look at a negative statement and we want to compare and contrast, like, why Shane's second response was pretty good. What was he thinking about while he was trying to do that? Why is that helpful? Why do we want to do that? And his first statement was not very kind, and it was kind of mean, and I and he hurt my feeling, and, um, you know, it was savage. Feeling. My feeling, singular. Yeah, that's, that's what Shane always says. Yeah. It's my, you hurt my feeling. Yeah. yeah. So Shane, why don't you tell me? Can you please tell me what you were going after in, in the sort of mean version of this, and then what were you thinking in the not so mean version of this? Like how? Why are we? It 
I think your intent matters in this, so just talk me through it. It does, and actually, um, while I was thinking about it, because I figured this question was going to come up, the intent was exactly the same. The intent was to get my point across. Now, there were two different delivery methods there. One, which is, I guess you would consider the violent or bullying method, where I'm trying to belittle you into agreeing with me, compared to trying to, um, I don't know if coerce is a good word, but trying to sweet talk you into agreeing with me. And it, it, to me, it's the same goal. It's just different methods to get there. So why, what do you think, what was the benefit of the first one? And what's the benefit of the second one? Um, the benefit of the first one, well, you know what though? Um, the benefit for the, I'm not sure there is too much I'm, benefit. I have to say that there is no benefit. Now, when you think about, uh, just put it in a different example. When is the... If you're having a problem with customer service at any time, when have you ever gotten the best result by being rude and mean and condescending to the customer service representative? It never works out. So to me, there is no benefit of being condescending and rude. It only causes further conflict. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, the only way the first one works, and I'm not even sure works is the right word, is if you're talking to people that are willing to be bowled over and willing just to be bullied into agreeing with you. So why, um, what What would be my public stance? What Do I have a favorite phrase that any of you know about wh how I'm going to deal with bullies? What, do, what What's my, like, number one libertarian-leaning saying that I have? Hopefully one of you guys will recognize this. Um, oh, uh, I know what it is. Bully, it's... Um, it, uh, bullying is or not, not bullying. Come on, no, no, no. Say it, Azaria. Uh, yes, damn it, it's on the tip of my tongue. It's it, the thing about um, victims are violent. No, yeah. no, it starts no, no. with do, and then do. no. Do, do do no harm, but take no shit. It's do no harm, but take no shit. So like, I, you know, it was, so Shane, wear the furry costume. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was what I was gonna say. And that, that is not my libertarian <laughs> principle. That is my millennial principle. Oh, and I got a snort. That was awesome. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just picturing changing the, the pal thing. <laughs> That's our motto. Yeah. <laughs> Furries, abundance, and liberty. <laughs> Yeah, all, the leadership team has all these onesies that are furries, and we're gonna take a group picture. Oh my god! When we do when we do MSP meetup, we gotta we gotta do a furry pic. <laughs> yeah. All right, Shane. Um, so why don't we? I want to go do a little bit of this conflict resolution. I want you to I want you to come at me again with another. I want you guys to see a little bit of the. Uh, um, I guess we need to do this twice. So Shane, why don't you go give me a mean version again? And we'll try to have like a quick dialogue about it, but I'm not gonna stand up for myself. We'll see how well I do at that, uh, and then and then we'll do it again. And I'll do this in kind of like a uh, the the sort of peace academy way of like trying to judo this a little bit. So hit me with a hit me with a mean bidbot statement. Uh, am I pro or against bidbots? You're a, you're you're anti. Currently, you are anti me for having even created one and made it public or something. You were yeah. anti and you were frustrated with me, not only the idea, but you were like attacking me personally for having done it. Oh, damn it, Agro, you're always doing this. You're always making bid bots. You don't ask anyone about anything and you just go ahead and push this bid bot through. And it's a stupid idea. And I'm gonna tell you why it's a stupid idea is because- Don't you, you don't tell me it's a stupid idea, Shane. Hey. You know, I can tell you some of the now stupid things that you do. You listen to me. You know it's a dumb idea. And bid bots are going to ruin this platform. How do you know that? You have no proof. If you don't have any have, freaking proof, how can you even I say have, that? You're the guy that's a freaking idiot. Oh, that hurt my feet. <laughs> So, okay, so I didn't, uh, I guess I did this in a different bad way than just sort of rolling over, because that's not how I, that's not how yeah, I roll. I wasn't roll. expecting the punch back to the face, yeah. I was expecting yeah. to say you, okay. No, 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 I know, I know. I, I switched it up, because I, I, I fucking can't do it, that's why. So, um, but I can lash out in anger, and like, that is my first response. My first response, always in my head, is be like, I'm gonna fucking smash this dude. 
like that, I mean, I, I hope I don't come off that way in any of the things that I do because I resist my first urge. But my first urge is anger, and I'm going to fucking smash people that come at me. So, uh, so let's go. What I'd like you to do, what I'd like you to do again, is give me another mean one and come at me with it. And then I'm gonna let's try to let let's try to de-escalate this a little bit and see if like, you know, I can I can parse the good and the bad of what you're saying and maybe make this a healthy dialogue. So so come at me, Shane. I just made a bid bot. You don't like bid bots, and you're not only angry at the bid bot, but you're angry at me personally. Hit it. All right, I'm going to flag the shit out of you for making another stupid bid bot that's going to ruin this platform. I don't know what you were thinking with this. Why would you go when you know that bid bots are ruining the platform? We need user integration, and you're not doing it, and you're part of the problem, Agro. You're part of the problem. Yeah, I, yeah, I can hear that frustration, Shane. What, what, do you think, what do you think is the solution to this? Why are you so frustrated right now? I think the solution is we kick you off the platform and flag you to oblivion. What do you think about that, huh? Well, I think that might be a little bit aggressive. I feel like there's a lot of good things that I do here. But again, I, I think this is less about me right now and maybe more about your frustrations about BitBots. Or maybe you have a fear. What are you afraid of that these BitBots are going to do, Shane? <laughs> there you go. I'm afraid the bid bots are going to ruin the platform, and you're going to ruin everybody. Well, how is it going to ruin the platform? These things already exist. The platform's still here. Steam's still at a dollar. Our SPD's at a dollar seventy. Like, where where do you see the fear? Where's this big problem coming from? Dogs and cats living together. <laughs> this is what's going to happen. Okay. So so now let let's break this down. So first, when a situation happens and two people are angry, what's the first thing, what's probably the first best step? Well, I think it's just acknowledging them. Like, I, did you feel acknowledged in that? Like, I, it's not like I'm saying fuck off. It's, you know, you sound frustrated. What are you frustrated about? So do you right. Feel right. Yeah, so you're acknowledging the other person's feeling. Probably the first best step is to take some time to cool down. So if you're receiving a message, either verbally or written, and you find yourself becoming very angry, step back from it before you say something that you regret. That would be, as far as conflict resolution, a first step to take. Yeah. Then, once, once you're feeling calm enough to communicate, then you would want to listen to the other person without interrupting, which is very difficult to do. You know, do. The, you gotta, can I, um, oh shit, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm sorry. But you gotta, <laughs> you gotta be careful too about, <laughs> yes. you gotta be careful with avoidance. Because there, there's a point where de-escalating a conflict where somebody's fuming mad and you can be like, hey, you know, I don't think you're in the best state to do this, which usually just pisses them off. But you, you can do things like, hey, I, I can see that you're really frustrated. This isn't a great time for me. Can we set a time to do this? I know that you're mad, but uh, I'm right in the middle of something. Can we, can we put this off for 30 minutes? I mean, if you, right. if you give time frames and things like that, then maybe people won't come back at you so... And it's not, it's not like you are, um, it's not like you're avoiding it, but if you can give that with a date and a time of when you're actually thinking you might be available, which may equal the exact date and time when you think that they have the ability to cool the fuck off, but, um, you know, you can just frame it as, this is an inconvenient time for me right this second. Yeah, and you're acknowledging their feelings at the same time, so that's a good way to do it. So there, and there, we can get some de-escalation. Now, let's say he doesn't take the bait. What I, I'm still in this fight. He's not going away. I have a, I have another thirty minutes of my show, and angry Shane is on my show, and I don't like. I, I, I respect Shane, and I want people to be heard. I don't just want to kick him off. What do I do? How do I handle that? Well, I think you were doing it the good way. Um, one of the things you want to do is use active listening, sometimes called reflective listening, and that's restating what the what the other person is saying to you. And it it basically shows two things: that one, you were really listening, because you know, but one, when you're arguing with someone, sometimes we have a tendency to think about what we want to say next instead of really listening to the other person. So when you use active listening, it shows that you were really listening to them. And then it also helps to clarify if there were any misunderstandings. So he was telling you how upset he was. And you say, okay, so I can hear that you're very upset because you feel like it's going to be raping the reward pool and whatnot. So basically you're really trying to find out, you're trying to dig deep into what the other person's concern is instead of instantly trying to 
come back with your points. All right. Uh, Torico, I have often told you, <laughs> don't come at me, bro, uh, on one of these shows. Now, now's your chance. I'm going to go, I'm going to say, Torico, here's your shot. Come at me. What, come, come with a little bit of fire. I don't care what it is. And let's go try to, like, de-escalate this. Presumably it's still Bidbot related. Let's just, uh, we're going to go, we're going to do this again. So, so Aggie went East Coast style. We, well, I mean, I'm from the East Coast, and I don't think that we're all bad people. So I, he, I, bad, I hear you're cons- very vocal about their cursing. No, you, you, I mean, it doesn't have to be cursing. It can be whatever you want. I mean, you, but, but, but the, point, the point here is that, like, I want you to have non-constructive dialogue with me, however, however you might do that. About uh, presumably oh, about one of these, yeah, non-constructive. Because I want to have okay. I want to have one of these conversations where we can sort of break it down and then try to come back at this and say, here's a here's a better, healthier version of doing this. Okay, here we go. Well, another stupid bid bot. I mean, how many bid bots we have? We don't need another bid bot because they are just taking over the system, and we have people building bots and not enough people using them. And what they're doing is they're not really helping at all. Okay. You know, yeah, that wasn't... Tarko, I thought you had a little bit more uh, vin and vinegar than that. I, we, and you know, I'm thing. a logic... <laughs> and another you're thing. not doing it. Damn it, Agra. Damn it, puppy. None of you are doing you, this right. Yell. Yell. But, Go East Coast on them. Let the thing know how is, dumb is if is. I it, if I yell, I start cussing, and I don't want to, you Go know, hurt cuss. Cubby's this, feelings. It's the internet, and Cubby's okay. Cubby's hurt me. Okay. Cubby, 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 earmuffs. Where, where, Go. Go. Where's Go. her Go. earmuffs? So, doesn't somebody Bring. have an earmuffs icon? Bring Clay Bring. on the show. Bring Clay on the show. Oh, be ready to come on? No. All right. Clay's gonna yell at me. All right. This, this is apparently the yell at Agra show. Okay. Great. Uh, Clay, bring yourself you on. Too. Just, just hop on here. I, there's enough people in here that I can't just grab you. He will do it in sub frequencies. That's right. Come on, subwoofer, get on here and go. All right. So, uh, no, Clay, hop in the damn show. You, Clay, just click on live. There on we air. go. Yeah, he's Clay. You're a mod. You now have access to this channel. <laughs> you can just do your thing. For some reason, I don't. But. uh... Oh, I wonder if I limited it to junior mods. Or I didn't let I didn't let junior mods do this. Permission. Damn it! Uh, I so just, just to be clear, <laughs> I get off the wall. You're not doing uh, it. I right. didn't I didn't do it for junior mods. <laughs> I'm a Good savage. Job, I'm okay, a okay, savage. Guys, you guys, you ready? Just just to be completely clear here, th- this is basically me playing a role. Oh yeah, no Clay. Nobody uh, like you're my you're my furry lover. Nobody thinks that uh that you're really mad <laughs> oh my at me. God. So okay, so do do you think everybody should be making like a hundred dollars for a fucking shit post? Like, I mean, just just because you do, you think everybody else should have that same privilege? <laughs> well, you know, Clay, I I hear what you're saying. It is frustrating when really low quality content gets rewarded. Uh, I, I tend to spend a lot of time on my personal content, so I don't like to think of it as a shit post. But I do think that it's an issue that if we actually have a lot of shit posts and they're getting rewarded, I think you're right. That's bad for the platform. Well, well you see, they th- this isn't really what Agro thinks. I'm, I'm telling you, clearly, you write shit posts and you're going out here rewarding other shit posts. Like this is obviously your intention. Well, you know, it's. I don't think it's really fair for other people to go judge what my intention is. I mean, I, I, I do work pretty hard. I'm a PhD chemist. I went through a lot of school. I, I worked hard to get my degree. I can write well. And I try to help a lot of people on this platform. So it, it's frustrating for me to hear that you, that you think that I'm purposely doing shit posts when, in fact, I'm spending hours here. Wh- where is that notion coming from? Is it just because the posts are getting a lot of money? Is it because the, the, the reward to views is off? How are you, like, what are you judging based off of? Well, my post didn't make that much, so clearly yours is a shit post and you got overpaid. 
Yeah, I mean, there's sometimes, sometimes there's elements of that where um, people look at my post and they think, hey, that's a shit post or it's not as good as my content. How the, why can't I do that? And, you know, to you, I'd say part of this platform is actually the networks that we make. And those are as important as the, the content of the post. And that's hard for people to figure out here. But I have a really strong network because I spend hours every single day helping people. And so I can appreciate that you might think that my posts are overvalued. Um, I think some of that might be that people value me as a person on the platform and they're trying to support me. So even though my, uh, my last eight posts have been just one single cat photo, I really don't think it's a shit post. It's just... So, so, so wait, what, what you're trying to say is you think you're better than me. Well, you know, I, I don't. I think everybody on here serves a really phenomenal purpose and a value. But, you know, I, I think you're kind of coming at me pretty hard here. And I just wish I, I wish that we could find a little bit more common ground because, I like, I like you, Clay. You seem like a nice guy. You're really thoughtful. Maybe there are some ways that I can help your posts get more recognition and use my follower base to do that. But I, I don't appreciate kind of the uh, your approach where you're actually trying to put me down because uh, I do a lot of work here. Well, I mean, the fastest way to build myself up is to obviously lower you at the same time. That way we can just meet in the middle. So, I mean, it's, it's something logical. Yeah, no, I, I hear that. But I think that there's other ways to do this, and we're going to end this dialogue with that. So, so, so basically what you want to do, what the issue was there was attacking the person and not the problem. Yeah, and so you can acknowledge the frustration. Like I, I don't have to. I don't have to wear his judgments about me. Like that's a gift I don't have to accept. Like I'm not coming back and being like, "Well, look here, you fucker. I'm looking at your fucking posts, and your fucking shit posts like are the worst freaking things. Why? Why? I don't even waste my time reading your shit. Like." Um, we're not doing that because I, I don't have to accept the anger that he's bringing to the table. I can say, you know what, I, I don't need that. I don't need to respond with it. I don't need to mirror it. I can just sort of like acknowledge his concerns and try to state how I'm not doing the things he's accusing me of. Right. I think it, there's a such a tendency with the social media. Um, this goes way before steam it, that people... You know, YouTube, Facebook, people just argue with each other just for the sake of arguing. Well, and it's it's the anonymity there where, like, yeah. and there's no consequences. I can go do whatever the hell I want. I can be rude. I can be mean. I can talk shit, and there's zero consequences. But on Steam, there are. If I act yeah. like an asshole to Bernie Sanders off-chain, I'm going to get flagged by, for a lot of money. My actions are going to cost me something. And if I do it on the block, it's probably going to be even worse. Yeah. So, um, so part of this is just trying to teach people. And I'm not, you know, I'm just hoping that some something in this, uh, this cast here is going to go resonate with folks. And they're going to say, you know what? Um, every now and then I actually catch myself getting really heated and attacking the other person rather than attacking the other thing that I don't like. And sometimes we, it's easy, especially when we're pissed off, to conflate the two. So how can we, so what can you do, um, what can you do to make sure that, like, you're, you're not coming into the conflict, like, already, already freaking furious? Like, how many, how many of you guys have actually resolved really angry conversations well? Do those normally go well? Right, that's the thing, that's the first step, is taking time to cool off. Um, you know what, Ellie had a good question. What happens when the people with more power on Steemit are the ones who act like that because they can? So uh, I've dealt with this quite a bit. I had two conversations about this, one with uh, Tech Slut, who is getting flagged by Bernie, and then one with, um, with Rhonda K or Rondak and Gmux, where they were getting flagged by Transisto. And 
to me, I actually think that getting flagged by a whale is actually one of the single best things that can happen to you on the platform because it's freaking newsworthy. And now if you're just making shit posts and they're flagging you for that, then that's not newsworthy. But if somebody opinion flags you, this is one of the single best opportunities on the platform to hold the spotlight on you and say, hey, look, look at what, what's happened to me. Everybody pay attention. I've gotten this flag and, and it creates controversy. So, like, not that I'm encouraging you to go run out and pick a fight with people because nobody's going to support you on that. But if you're just, do, like, minding your own business and somebody tosses a huge flag on you, your first thought should it be, fuck this, fuck everything, I'm going to leave this stupid platform, I quit, how dare you, and all this other shit. No, 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 no. Take a moment and, and just get a big smile on your face and realize the favor they just did you because you can make a freaking killing just by posting about that experience. But only if you don't go on offense. Like if you go on offense and you start calling these people out saying what a bunch of assholes they are out there, you flag, you don't have the right, like you can't use your SP like that, my shit's amazing. Like if you go in that route, nobody's going to support you. But if right. you, but there's a judo to this. You can use judo, the the use my opponent's momentum against them. If I'm little and they're huge and they're doing a big action to me, I I get the the leverage of their audience and the the leverage of how much presence they have on the platform. And as a minnow or just as a content writer, you don't get that very often. But if you get flagged, it it's like front and center. So before you run off and like write your flaming I'm leaving and you're all assholes post, you might just get yourself a little smile and be like, aha, I know how to turn this into something amazing. Because I'll tell you, one of the times that one of the times that um that I got where is this thing? Uh, I need Bernie, I need uh Agrode, I need uh rewards dinner. Because I actually got my, yep, this is my, I, I got my first flag from Bernie. And when I got my first flag, this is what I wrote about it. Um, this was my, this was my award speech dinner that I was giving at the Responsible Flag Foundation Benefits Award Dinner. And this was my, um, this is my, my, like, it wasn't flame, it's not quite satire, but it was, instead of, like, coming at him and trying to bash his head in for being a big mean asshole. Like I tried to tried to find some joy in this and I and you know, it it got me some press at the time. Yeah, I think that's a really good approach. I saw recently someone who got flagged and was very upset about it and made Oh, I, I don't know how to say it. They were I guess the comments were rude. Um, further posts were rude and just didn't go about it in the right way and lost a lot of support from it. Yeah, I mean, that it, it, it's like the cover-up is worse than the crime. Like, if yeah. you get flagged but you act like a total asshole about it, like you're entitled to your rewards and nobody else right. gets a say and how dare you flag. Nobody, nobody wants to listen to that. And, uh, but, I mean, I feel like you get a right to learn that, and hopefully hopefully you can learn that by watching others than having to learn that and experience it yourself. But, yeah, kind of flaming on the platform, even about righteous things of, like, I'm getting yeah. flagged unjustly. If you're sitting there flaming, this community isn't going to support you because this community generally wants peace. We want We want folks to get along, and we want folks to be successful, and we want this platform to grow, and your drama isn't really welcome here. Right. And that's where the first step always comes in, take some time to cool down because the person – was very upset, but they didn't take that necessary. To, you know, I think some people, oh, I just had 10 million thoughts at once. I was thinking today about meditation. Meditation is so important because it helps to train your mind. And if you, everyone's different. Some people have a tendency to fly off the handle and get very raw about their emotions instantly and go on the attack. And meditation helps you to rein in that part of yourself so that you can take the time to cool off and come back in a more logical way. Because we all know that when you are 
coming at a conflict with raging anger, it's only going to get worse. So, Shane, you you have told me at times you you tend to get angry, uh, and maybe you can be hot headed at times. Do you act during those times, or do you take a break? And if you do take a break, how do you convince yourself to do that? Um, no, I, I've got myself to the point where I have to force my break. If I don't have a break, I will explode. Um, it's something that I've always dealt with, so I've learned to deal with it when I was younger. I had no control over it whatsoever. So a lot of really good opportunities in life I threw away because I didn't know how to handle my emotions. And through those losses is actually how I learned that, hey, I need to figure this out. i got to figure out what I need to do so I don't continue to... Well, fuck myself. So, what, for a lack of a better term, what did you yeah. what did you do? How did you do this differently? What do you What was the lesson that you learned? How did you figure out how to do this? Well, there there was a time um, when I was younger, younger being about seventeen, eighteen years old, um, that I the the combination of my anger and running my mouth, I lost a chance to play um, a, at least a full ride scholarship for college baseball, and probably at least a minor league tryout at the minimum. And I blew that just because I could not control my temper um, and I could not control my mouth. And when I was cut and I was told I was cut because I was a cancer, um, that's when I realized I had to make a change. So I learned it fairly early on. So it was tough. I mean, it was just one of those things when I felt the anger coming on, I would just think back to what I lost because of not being able to control it in the past. And I learned to walk away until I could cool down. After I cool down, I can talk something rational. But in, until that until that redness goes away, it, there, there's basically no talking to me. So you right. know. Yeah, and there's a, that happens here. And like if we have an uh, argument, um, he will take that time to just cool down. And then later on, we talk and it's okay. I think it's important. You know, we, we've never had any huge blowout fights because of it. Because as soon as we, as soon as a, a problem happens, if there's a huge amount of anger, we separate and take some time to cool down. Um. So, so you you have an inherent knowledge that it is unwise, and you yes. know that there's losses that come from it. But people know that and do shit anyways. So the the knowledge isn't enough. Somehow you have to have that self restraint. Is that self restraint really just based off of the knowledge, or do you have techniques that you use now, or like what? Like, all right, you just get really freaking mad. Aggie, Aggie made this decision. You freaking hate it, and you think it's gonna ruin MSP and all the freaking time you spend here, and it's gonna ruin your reputation. Like, how do you how do you not just freaking blow up at me? How do you like? Is it enough to know that it might be a bad idea in your head or unwise or something? Or is it? Is there like a practice or an approach or something that you do? Well, well like I, I – oh, sorry. Go ahead, Shane. I was going to say for – you know, that's one of those things where everybody is going to have a different approach or different thing that works for them. Some people um, need to go and punch things. Some people need to go and just cuss something out. Some people need to do whatever it is. Um some people don't know, don't realize that their anger is what's causing all of the issues. They think they're solving problems instead of creating more. Um, I say I'm lucky that I learned early on that I was causing problems with that approach instead of solving them, which I think a lot of people think they're solving problems with that. I mean, they, you, you are certainly resisting some change, right? Like, that's that's what we were talking about in the family systems theory stuff a week or two ago of, like, you know, people tend to get angry and bully when they have a dynamic that's working for them, and then there's suddenly some kind of shift in that dynamic that leads away. And oftentimes it's really about some kind of codependence. You know, it's it's a dependence on something, and so you you fight that hard, and you attack the other person so as to not uh, break your dependence on it, which is weird because we don't really think of bullies as codependent people. Uh, we tend to think of them as they're the strong ones, and they can do, and they they're like powerful. And it's ironic or like possibly different to go think of them as the people that are insecure 
and they're the people that need things a certain way or they can't function. But at least in this family systems theory, that's that's the impetus for that anger. That's the impetus for kind of lashing out is they have a dependence that's in existence and there's a threat to the dependency that they've created. Right. Yep. And there's a low self-esteem with that and they need things to be a certain way and their way to try to change that is by bullying. It's in, it is interesting. So um, I think we did a nice job of talking about anger. Uh, Cubby, do you, uh, Cubby can't hear me. She's got she's got earmuffs on entirely. I was going to see if she wanted to come at me angrily again. Azaria, do you want to try an angry one again? Uh, I do think this might actually be a healthy exercise for you. Yeah, because you know what? It, it could be um, because – one of my issues in life is that I instantly go to sadness. Like when, when you were talking before about, you know, it's like if you get flagged, instead of your first response is being, fuck you, I would, I would probably cry if I got flagged. So <laughs> I think I could learn to use a little bit of healthy anger. Yeah, um, I don't think, I don't think it, so my, my main thing on these things is that it is a good skill to have. I don't think, I, I really don't think most people should ever use anger like and use that as a tool but you, you really want to be in touch with it you want to be in touch with any of these kind of painful things because they're just they're like a red they're like the red light in your car they're telling you that something is off or broken or needs help uh, and so you know the red light goes off and I'm I get really angry and I know now oh that actually just means I'm hurt so you just like kind of crumble or get sad you know instead of just fully being in that moment of crumbling and sad, you can just be like, oh, here's my red light. Uh, this means that I'm hurt and maybe I can diagnose where that's coming from and maybe I can go sort of figure out how I might solve it. Um, yeah, yeah. But but now, you know, let's get let's get some anger going. Yeah, uh, Maybe the bid bot isn't a good enough issue for you. Um, no. Cheez-Its. Cheez-Its. Cheez 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 uh, Isaria... One of these is so worth fighting for. I gotta, I gotta tell you, I kind of hate cats. Uh, my cat, my cat was like the most abusive, vicious little animal. I saw it like slapping around little chicks, like uh, right before it would pounce and kill them. I think cats are menacing little monsters, and I kind of hate them. How does that make you feel? That doesn't. That just makes me feel sad that you had that experience. <laughs> no, no, you're you're, you're, you're you're doing this wrong, Azaria. I know. Oh my god. Okay. How about if someone said to me that they hurt an animal? Oh yeah. Hey. Okay. So yeah. I like I, you know that cat that I was talking about that I thought was a menace. Every now and then I would just throw it across the room because I couldn't stand looking at it. You fucking piece of shit. Okay. Okay. How's that? Well, I mean, <laughs> that's a that's a start. You know what? It's different because I know you didn't really do it. Well, okay, so I gotta tune into thinking that you really did it. You fucking piece of shit! Don't fucking hurt an animal. Why not? It's just an animal, Azaria. It doesn't it doesn't think or feel. <laughs> You know what? I'm about to dox your fucking ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, will, I will find you and I will hurt you. <laughs> nice. Nice. I triggered Azaria. I didn't know it was yeah. possible. But that that had a little venom in it. I could feel that. That was good. Yeah. All right, good. I'm well, they all, I mean, so so look, you just experienced that raw anger, and I hope I hope at times, like, there are moments where raw anger is actually appropriate. It's not appropriate to, like, act on that and to, like, go after somebody with it, usually. I mean, if if the behavior is stopped, then, then it's usually time to not do that. If the behavior is ongoing, then I actually think that some of that righteous anger might be appropriate because it can fuel a drive. Like, I'm really mad at banksters that are kind of fucking over our world, and it's part of the reason why I'm in here day in, day out, and it fuels me, and I'm basically always angry about it, and it's all going to make a fucking change. So channeling some of that anger into productivity, I actually think can be really healthy. 
So I, I you know, yeah. not that I want you to live in a state of anger, but there are times where it's emotionally appropriate to sort of grab that inner anger and you can associate that with like people that abuse kittens. But wherever that comes from, hopefully there will be times in your life that when it feels, instead of being sad or like, or even just if you recognize that you're getting angry, being in touch with what that emotion looks like gives us the benefit of like making smarter decisions about what we're going to do with it. Because yeah. like the worst people are the ones that are angry and are like, I'm not even shouting. You know, it's like, uh, yeah. you're, you're kind of shouting, you're kind of acting like an asshole. But but it's dangerous because they don't recognize it. So right. um, so hopefully now when when you feel some of that anger for whatever reasons you can now more easily identify it and then you can kind of get to the core of of what that means or how you want to proceed. But because like you you need to take the snapshot of how you're feeling first before you like dive into these things. Right. Yep, that's a really good point. Like a guided, healthy anger is important. Good point. What's her heroic saying using the eye trick? I want to know what the eye trick is. And I mean, there's a seven second lag. So. so maybe using I statements whenever you're having an argument, like I feel this way or I, I feel that instead of you did this or you did that. Is that what you mean? Yeah, he just wants I feel statements. Yeah, those yeah. are... Yeah, mm-hmm. So I, I, you know, I feel statements are good. One of, one of the things about these I feel statements is that they're going to... They, they soften the other person up to go... Uh, to hear that response from you. So Shane comes in and Shane says, You're such a fucking idiot, Ag. How could you fucking put Minnow Support's reputation on the line? You're going to fucking kill this project. And I can and I can say, well, you know, Shane, that actually kind of hurts because I really respect your opinion, and I feel like uh, I'm doing my the best that I can. I'm sorry if I disappointed you, but um, I, that just really hurts, and I'm trying to function with that. So now the, the there's like that. It's not it's not guilt tripping the other person, but it's like I'm sharing with you how that response made me feel, and now you're able to sort of respond to that. And not just not just look at me and hate me and hate every emotion, but maybe you can kind of like uh, empathize with that a little bit and be like, well, you know, I want Aggie's behavior to change, but maybe I didn't mean to make him feel like a worthless piece of shit. Maybe that was going too far. And and it's and it's sort of that self recognition that you can then turn this around and be like, okay, this is how that made me feel. You know, where you you have to be feeling something. Let's go talk about that. Where, where's all this anger coming from? Because I don't understand it. Like I didn't mean to ruin MSP in your mind. How do we? How, like, tell me where that's coming from, and then we can. Once once I understand where his fears are and where his anger is and where his mind is at and where what he's feeling, it just makes it a lot easier for me to like go on to the next process and be like. Okay, I can understand why you think that now, or what you're what you're responding to. I can work with this now, and now we can have a better conversation about it. So right, and, uh, yeah. yeah, and when you use you statements, a lot of people just tend to get more defensive, and then the argument just gets worse. Yeah, I mean, you gotta. Um, I'm trying to go through Ellie's statement here, but when discussing something with a stranger acquaintance, it brings it out of the realm of the topic being discussed and relies on them having sympathy for you as a person rather than your ideas. Yeah, I mean, some people are just going to be assholes and, like, they get off on being assholes. So, you know, all of these tricks don't necessarily work and making yourself vulnerable to another person is not always a great idea. I mean, I think this is really in the realm of, like, trying to, to make peace with the other people. Um... But, you know, in the cases where you don't quite feel safe, you can always just go to the customer service voice and be like, well, you know, I, I really appreciate your input. Thank you for that. I, I, I think I heard you. You're frustrated because you don't like the choices I made about BitBots. I understand where you're coming from. Thank you for your feedback. Um, I'll, I'll take it into consideration, and I'll, and I'll try to think about that and do something about it later. You know, that's like a perfectly reasonable response to an angry person. I mean, I could also tell him to fuck off at the end, but 
that's it's not going to help me. It's not going to help the case. And if they have some steam power and I tell them to fuck off, I might actually get flagged for this. And it's going to escalate into a fight and it's going to cost me money and time, neither of which I really feel like I have to lose. So there are better ways to go do this. And and that's what this show is about. This show is about... Um, the show is about trying to find a better way and trying to interact with one another peacefully and trying to, to realize um, sort of how to do that, why to do that, the benefits of that, how to self-diagnose if you're doing that. And um, I don't know, hopefully hopefully this is helping some people. I mean, I, I'm not looking in this audience and being like, wow, you're a bunch of angry assholes that can't figure out how to act. But I do, I do feel like... Um, this is really hard for me to learn. I mean, I, I've been through some shit and I'm just trying to share some of the things that I've learned to people that I think quite highly of uh, in the hopes that if we all kind of do this collectively and add our voice to this in a peaceful, abundant and, and liberty minded way that we'll have a better world to, uh, to work in. I agree. I think if we have peace in our, and within ourselves, within our direct circle and then without, you know, within our communities, I think that's a good thing to try to work toward. So, um, Torco, thank you for coming on the show. I, I know we didn't get to you a ton. It, I, I do want to end this thing, but if there's something you'd like to share, Torco, I'd like to give you the opportunity. Well, I sort of came on because you were asking for reasons that like logical reasons Bidbots, and I had a whole list of those. Well, I wanted uh, I wanted angry reasons so that we well, could we could demonstrate unhealthy conversation. See, there's two types of anger for me. No anger, which I'm gonna rip your fucking head off. Logical anger, where there's a reason behind it. Um, with bidbots, is for me it doesn't evoke an emotional anger. It anger because there's specific reasons I have to question whether bitbots are good or not. Yeah, but that's a healthy response. What yeah. I was, what I'm trying to look for is an unhealthy response to demonstrate that on the show. Yeah, I because, think you because we're not really talking about bitbots here. We're really talking about how to handle conflict, and the topic is bitbot because uh, that's yeah. that's kind of freaking everybody out on the platform. The show isn't actually meant to be about bitbots. Okay, so um, the issue here is, is I'm a lot like Azarian. Instead of getting angry, I will go into hurt first, and then I'll get to anger. I can really resolve it is to write it out, because writing is my natural state. When I'm on the radio, I actually have to think a lot about what I'm going to say. And so there's lots of like open air spaces because I am still searching in my head to get the words out. If I'm angry, I will be speechless because I'm ready to push you through the wall. So I, I think that's an important distinction is that a lot of people we just talk about anger because they're in such an emotional state that it's past that. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for sharing that, Shane. I wanted to go with thank you for being on the show and demonstrating. And you didn't take me to the park that one time you promised. You never showed up to take me to the zoo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that's I think that's somebody else you mean to be angry at. <laughs> He's a bad I, dad. I was just I was just here to say thanks. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. And Shane, yeah. cheesecake. Yeah. So it's your fault. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't want. I don't actually want to tell Shane that because he didn't go to the park with the person that he cared about that it was his fault. So I didn't want to. I didn't want to drop well, we'll, that. We'll... Cheesecake on him. All right. Uh, and then, of course, I want to go thank my co-host Azaria. Azaria, I, I cut you off once today, maybe twice. I didn't mean to. I'm trying really hard. <laughs> It's okay. Well, you know. It's totally okay. I'm all good. All right. We're well, making a list. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm just I'm just doing the best I can. So this was a fun show. I hope that the audience enjoyed it. I do want to bring it to a close. 
Um, what what's a good anger song or what's a good what's a good song to end this? War. Thing? War. Ugh. What is it good for? That one? Or the U2 one either. Uh, just war. I could do war by U2. You know? Oh, that's uh, war pigs, warriors. I don't see it. Ah! I, maybe I need to put U2 in here. U2. War Deluxe Edition. You don't want... Oh, that's the album. The album is war. There's Sunday Bloody Sunday oh. and New Year's yeah, Day. Yeah, there you go. You know, like it's sunny, bloody. It's only Saturday, but I'll let this slide. <laughs> okay. So I like it. Uh, Azaria, why don't you why don't you sign us out here, and uh, I'll just add thanks for being on the show uh, for the guests, and also thank you to the audience for listening. I hope this was helpful. Azaria, any last words? Thanks everyone for being here at the Peace Academy. Great conversation. Uh, thanks to Agro, Torco, Cubby, Shane. And the audience, we will see you guys next week. All right, these people are making me play "Killing in the Name of," and I'll do that instead because this is because uh, it's raging against the machine. Here we go. Uh, I, yeah, so sorry. I mean, you might be mad at me for switching the songs on you. Uh, I'm stopping the recording.